All right, here's how we're going to build a simple interface, interactive interface in Flash uh, via timeline. We're putting the code inside the document, the FLA itself. We're not creating any external documents right now. This is a very basic uh, uh, interface in Flash. So what we're going to do is set up it the way that the playhead goes through different stages and each one has a different thing on the screen. Now, action script will tell my playhead to go to certain screens after I click certain buttons. And that is going to work as so. Control enter. And you have the start page right now. You're going to click on play game and you're going to be on the game screen. You're going to click on options. You're going to be on the options page. You're going to click on credits. That's going to be on credits page. And if at any time I want to go back to the start screen, that's the back button, takes me back to the start page. Okay, so that's what we're going to build. And here's the setup. Again, there's so many different ways to do that. This is just one of the simplest ways to do that. We're going to create a new document. I'm going to um, action script 3.0, hit OK. The first thing I'm going to do is double click on the layer here and name it background. And that's where my background is going to go. The second layer that I add, I'm going to name nav for navigation. The third layer is where I'm going to put contents in. So these are the three layers that are going to have things on the stage. This is going to have the background graphics, this is going to have navigation items such as buttons, and this one's going to have contents such as, hey, this is the uh, text and pictures for start page and so forth. This one is going to be a labels, and um, I usually label it like that, so I see it's a labels layer, simply for the purpose of labeling the keyframes. And the last layer always goes on top, and that's your action script 3 layer, AS3. Again, these layers are not going to have anything on the stage. In fact, this only will have things in the timeline, such as labels. And this layer here is going to have only one keyframe with actions in it. Okay. So to start, we're going to click on the background layer. And just to imitate a simple background, I'm going to just type in background. And to emphasize the point that that's a background, I'm going to create a little line there. So that's my background for my entire movie. I'm going to lock this layer. I'm done with the background. It's going to be the same. It's a very simple interface. Navigation, my next step. I'm going to click on my rectangle tool and get a little gray color and create a button like so. Select it and hit F8 to convert that to a symbol. Once the menu pops up, you're going to select the type of the symbol as a button. And you're going to name that my PTN. You want to make sure you name your symbols, otherwise you're going to end up with having too many symbols with names such as symbol 1, symbol 2, symbol 3, and all the way to 1,000 in some cases. So my BTN button, hit OK. Once I have the button here, I'm going to give it an instance name. Instance names are absolutely necessary for action scripts so that when I type it up, uh, when I'm typing up the action script, I can refer to that button. And the only way to refer to that thing is through this instance name. So I'm going to select the button and type in an instance name for it. And this one is a start, oops, start button, BTN. 
Okay, so that uh, starts the game. I'm also going to double click on the button itself to go in and edit the insides of the button so I can have rollover stages. I'm going to click on the over stage and say F6. We'll add a keyframe and just um, highlight it a little bit. And then on down, when you click on the button, it's going to be even a little bit lighter. So hit F6 and go even lighter. And then on hit, I'm just going to hit F6. That's the hidden area. That's where it detects it's a button. So I don't really care about what color it's going to be as long as it's there. So right now I have gray, blue, lighter blue, and then whatever color I'm not going to see. To get out of the button edit mode, I can click on scene 1 here, or I can double click on an empty space and I'm back out on the main timeline. Once I'm back out on the main timeline, and I do have the instance name set up, all I need to do is hold Alt and click and drag this button down to produce a copy and make a third one like so. So we have three buttons now. One for start, one for options, and one for credits. This is all great. The only problem is that they all have the same instance name. So the first one, that's the instance name we need. So we're going to leave that. The second one, I'm going to click on that and type in, instead of start BTN, I'm going to type in options. BTN and for the last one it's going to be credits BTN so now all three buttons are named and I can proceed to the next layer contents is where I'm going to set up the contents to know since this is a prototype, all I need to do is to see that there's a change that's going to the screen that I need it to go to. So on the contents layer, I'm, I'm, in, I'm actually going to lock the navigation layer so I don't accidentally put anything on there. On the contents layer, I'm going to type in the contents and that is going to be, for the first page, it's going to be the start page or the start screen. And maybe a little graphic at the bottom. Okay. So that's the start screen. Now we don't have any more screens yet because we haven't put the labels in. So we're going to go ahead and put the labels in and I'll show you again how they look like. So we can tell the playhead to go from one label to another to display information that's listed on that um, on those frames. So to, to put in the labels like so, we're going to uh, click on the keyframe in the labels layer and give the first one a name and that's going to be a start. The only reason I'm skipping a few frames here is so that I can actually read it once it becomes available. Okay, so the second one is going to be if I hit F6 you can see that you can now read start. The second one is going to be options. Third one on 20 hit F6 and type in game, that's for the game itself. And the fourth one, hit F6 and that's going to be credits. And I'm not going to have any more labels, but I do want to make sure that I can read what that flag says, so I'm going to click on 40 and just hit F5 so that I can extend the frame so I can read the name. Now that I have these set up, I can set up 
the contents, the nav, and the background to be visible on the rest of them. I'm going to go on to nav and background, and they're going to be the same. Background and navigation are not going to change throughout my uh, user interface just for this prototype. And I'm going to hit F5 just to extend the frames so they're seen from any label. The only thing that's going to be changing here is what's on the contents layer. And to change that, going to click on co um, contents layer underneath the options label. That's very nice how labels is right above the contents. That's where we put it there. So we can just look, hey, that's options. That's where I changed the content. Going to hit F6 in there. It's going to copy what I had on the start label. And I'm going to use that to change that as options. Options screen. And I can even change the colors so visually we can notice there's a difference. Okay. Underneath the game label, we're going to hit F6 again. And this time, this is actually going to be the game screen. The game itself, right? And um, we'll change the color here as well. Okay, and the last one is credits. So underneath the credits label, I'm going to hit F6 and change this to credits. And we'll change the color as well. So at this point, what you should have is when you put playhead at start, you're going to see the start screen here. Play the with the playhead at options, you'll see options, and so forth. Game, you'll see game screen, and credits, you'll see credits screen. <laughs> okay. The next thing we're going to do is add action script. Now, if you hit control enter right now, it's going to loop through all the screens. And to stop that from looping, I need to put in a stop at the beginning of my code. Now I'm going to pin this here so it doesn't uh, go away in case I click on anything else. So, uh, But in the first frame of action script 3 layer, that's where all the code's going to go. I'm going to type in stop. And that stops our movie from looping. Now we need to code the buttons to go to the places that we need them to go to. The first button we're going to code is to pull up the actions menu is F9 on most computers. Okay. On Mac it might be Shift or Alt F9 but on PC it's F9. So the first button name was that one was Start BTN as, as we named it, right? So we're going to type in Start BTN dot add event listener and it's going to be a mouse event and it's going to be a regular click and flash understands these blue words as keywords it knows what to do the names that we're giving are going to be black because that's the names that we've given if they accidentally turn blue because you've accidentally put in a, in a reserved name make sure you change it the function name I cannot just type in star because that's just turns blue, so I have to uh, indicate what the function name is and avoid having it blue. I'm going to type in function pressed. That's the end of that little line. So this is to start the game. So start btn will start the game. I'm going to add a little bit of a comment here. Uh, every time you uh, put a double slash, it comments the line out. Basically, code ignores that. Uh, this is this is the code for for um, game screen via start button, right? So you click on start button and you go to the game screen. And this is the function. If I hit Control Enter right now, it tells me, "Hey, I don't know what you're talking about." You place it here, but I don't know what to do. Well, 
obviously we need to declare a function. So we're going to type in function start crest has to be exactly the same name as here. And then event is a mouse event. Okay. And type in oops. Type in void in here because it's not going to return any values. And on the next line, you're going to open curly brace and then close it. And then in between nodes, the actual function is going to go. And we want the whole thing to go to and stop at what? At game. So type in game in there, close parentheses. Since that's a frame label, it has to go inside quotation marks and it turns green. Okay. And now if you play that, the error went away. And if you click on that, it goes to the game screen. Now, knowing this core code, I'm going to actually copy that. I'm going to actually copy this here and paste it. And this is the code for the options screen for the options button. So you click options button, go to options screen. Change everything here to options. Options here, options here, options here. And it's going to go to the label that says options as well. So that's great. Okay. Next one, going to type in, uh, paste in the code. And this is for the credits via credits button. So here we're going to change everything to credits. Now again, later when you learn a little bit more code, you will create switch statements here. They're going to take care of uh, redundancy and not going to have to repeat yourself so many times. But for now, this is just the simplest way to do that. And it's going to go to the credits screen. And the last one that I want is to go be able to go so see where the start screen right now I'll click that we go to game click that we go to options click get that we go to credits uh, in case you want to make a button that goes back to that start screen um, you'll need a back button and I'll go back on to my timeline unlock the navigation and add a little back button in there and I'll hide this via F9 Picard, little oval tool, let's make it red and put the button out here. Click on that, hit F8, convert that to a button, back BTN, give it an instance name, back BTN. I'm not going to change the stages over that, that's just a little tiny back button. And now I can put the code for the back button, go into action script copying the code that we already have. This is the code for the back button to go to start screen. And we gave it the name back btn. It's going to be saying the new function is going to be back pressed back pressed here and we'll return to the start screen and we're finished. We're at the start screen, we have options, we have credits, we have game, we can click on any one of them in any order and then we can always go back to the start screen. So that's a prototype for a little navigation using interface in Flash.